In the name of God the Father, the Son and the Holy Ghost. Mudzina la Mulungu atate la Mwana ndira mzimu oyera. We gather round thy mercy seat, Father of love. Tasongana kuzungulira pando wanu wa chisomo atate wa chikondi. And humble ourselves in heart, in soul, in spirit. Thank thee for all thy loving kindness and thy goodness to us on our way of life. And that thy love has drawn us together here this morning. And in all the congregations where thy servants and children gather. Thou hast given us thy comfort and thy strength. And we have come this morning to hear what the Spirit has to say to us as thy children. And here is our home. Here is the revealing place of thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Here we will receive again, Father, the guidance, the help which we need on our way of life. For sanctify us as thy servants as instruments in thy hand. Sanctify the ears of thy children. That each one can take deep in childlike faith and obedience. Thy word in all its power so that each one of us can bring forth the fruits of thy spirit. Thou knowest those who are in sorrow. Those who have laid all their cares upon the holy altar. Grant them comfort, peace, and strength through thy word. Then, Father, on our own, we can do nothing. Now we unite together with our dear chief of us. Cover us under his loving prayer in all things. Let that which he has asked be fulfilled upon our lives this morning. Father, fill this house with thy glory. And fill our hearts with the powers of the world to come. So that in this darkened time we can shine as lights amongst our filament. And that we can show therein that which thy spirit has accomplished upon our inner life. Oh Lord, open thy father heart wide. And visit us in thy love. Let thy glory, O Father, be shown. That every heart may glow with the wonder of that which comes out of thy spirit. Visit the sick and the suffering. Remember them in thy great love and mercy. And grant unto all who could not be with us this morning. Thy grace and thy comfort. We also unite with our loved ones in the realm of the redeemed. With all whom thou hast invited from the eternity this morning. So with one heart, one soul, we unite with thee, Father, and with thy Son. 
Mwamtima umozi ndi umoyo umozi tizianjanisa ino atate ndi mwana wangu. Grant us now an hour of peace. Tipase niso pano mtendere wanu. Let thy angels surround us. Lola ani angelo wanu atizungulire. Let the weather hold off so that we can, Father, receive all that which thy spirit will offer. Grant us more than we can put in words. For Jesus, thy dear son, say, Amen. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, I extend to you the greetings of love from our dear chief of Astor. That was the first message that the district evangelist Rushdie, who is with us here this morning, brought to me when he met me. This I share with you so that we may rejoice together. Hear a word out of Ephesians 5, verse 32. This is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. In Vanimau, which is in book of Ephesians, chapter 5, in the verse 32, Chisisi ichi mchachikuru Koma ndine na ine Za kristu ndi eklezia So far Maundi omweo
my dear brothers and sisters in Christ. Okonde Dwanga, Abale Ndi Alongo, Ma Christu. It is many years since last I have held a service here in your congregation. Nizaka Zambiri Zapitapo, Kuchokera Pomo Ndi Nachiti Sapo Mapempero Muno, Mumpingo Wano. And this is also on a special occasion this morning. Lelo, ya kansu ntawi ya padela mamuno. As we have two visitors from our Zurich office. Tidinao arendo avidi ochokera ku office latula ku Zurich. The district evangelist, Rashley, who is sitting nearest the wall. District evangelist, Rashley, yemwe wakala pa kupi ndichi pupa. And the priest, Peter Maybach. The priest, Peter Maybach. And that is the reason that I am here. Otherwise, I would have been somewhere else this morning. But I said I will rearrange my program. But I am also thankful that I have this opportunity to look into your eyes, to feel the development and the growth in your lives. It's not always that the father can be in the home. It's not always that the apostle can visit a congregation. But what joy is there when the two eventually come together? Then there is a bond through blood and through love. And our bond is through the blood and the sacrifice of Jesus Christ our Savior. And the love of our Heavenly Father. A love which we cannot fully understand. Because it is so great. It is so wonderful. And when it fills our hearts and our lives, then we feel a strength and an upliftment. Then how often did God visit his people in times of old? Says when God called through Moses the people to come together. Then it says the glory of God filled the house. They could not see the Lord. They could not see the Almighty God. But they could feel His glory as it was revealed in the congregation. When Moses came down from the mount, he was alone with God. And it says the mount was shrouded in mist and in darkness. But after 40 days, when he came down from the man, it says his face shone so that they could not look upon him. He was in the presence of the creator of all things. He was in the presence of the eternal God of love. He was in the presence of one who loved him and God's people, Israel. And so this glory out of God's spirit could also fill his life and become visible in his whole appearance. When the glory of God filled the house, at the time of the dedication of the temple by Solomon, then he says the priests could not minister 
for the glory of God and its brightness in the congregation. Beloved, we have experienced the same glory. And especially last Sunday in Lusaka. When God visited his people in his great love and in his mercy. And he laid upon her heart the wonderful thoughts inspired through his spirit. This glory filled our hearts and filled our lives. And brought about an upliftment. Brought joy, brought peace into our hearts and into our lives. And so, my beloved, we expect also this morning. Then Jesus said, Where two and three gather in my name, there I will come and bless my people. What more can we desire? Dear brothers and sisters, that this wonderful glory of the eternal Father, then it is a greater glory than it was at the time of Moses. A greater glory than it was at the time of David. A greater glory when he came into the temple at the time of Solomon. Because Jesus Christ brought us glory in its fullness, in his life, in his sacrifice here upon the earth. Then he could say in his high priestly prayer, Father, I have glorified thee. Glorify thou me. He could put this to his Father. Beloved in the Lord, can I also say, Father, I have glorified thee. In all the circumstances that I have lived through in life, I have glorified thee in the good days and in the unpleasant days. I have glorified thee in the hour of temptation and in the sorrows and the difficulties of life. I have glorified thee in the battles which I have had for my faith against the forces of darkness and evil. Father, I have glorified thee in that thy word and its power has had its effect upon my soul and upon my inner life. Something which, like Moses, can becomes visible in my life. That others can see. And that others can realize what has been accomplished upon my soul. Through the power and the glory of God. Beloved, can we say that? at the stage and development of our apostolic life. Can we say it at this moment when we are nearing the fulfillment of the promise of Jesus I will come again and receive you unto myself so that where I am there he may also be. What a glorious promise. And beloved, there is no question that it will be fulfilled. Then what God has promised, he is faithful, he will fulfill it. Can it come today? Can I say then, Father, I have glorified thee, now glorify thou me. 
God not already brought so much glory, so much love, so much wonder, so much peace into our heart and into our soul? Has he not told us so many of his secrets? Then for many he kept many a thing away from them. Then even Jesus said to his disciples, You cannot bear everything now. But when the Holy Spirit is come, he shall lead and guide you in all things. We have come far past this in our development and on the road to our <laughs> eternal peace and joy. When the psalmist said, Lord, I have loved the habitation of thy house and the place where thine honor dwells. Then, beloved in the Lord, let us consider and he loved in the habitation of the Lord. He loved the services. He loved to hear the word of God. But that word was hard. That word was bound to the righteousness of God. Thou shalt and thou shalt not. But his soul rejoiced in the word and in the power of God's spirit that was revealed. And beloved, do we not love the habitation of God's house? There is no question in our hearts. And we look forward from one service to the next. Because here God tells us his secrets. Here he reveals what he has in mind for us as his people. Here he tells us what we can expect on the morn of the first resurrection. Here he also tells us what he is preparing us for as kings and priests in the kingdom of peace. There is more than he told David. There is more than he told Abraham. Then he said to Abraham, get thee out of thy country. Get thee out of thy father's house to a land that I shall show you. He never told him what he would find there. He never told him of the better circumstances under which he would have to live. But as Abraham learned as the years went by, but God had given him a promise that out of his seed would come his people. And this promise held Abraham through his absolute faith and confidence in God that he could live through the heat and the circumstances of his time. But beloved in the Lord, can I ask you a question? Has the Lord held anything back from us? Has he not told us the time when he will return, the circumstances that will exist? Has he not told us that such a time as has never been upon the earth before? A time of sorrow. A time of circumstances. Time of the bitterness of life. Time of violence and despair in the hearts of men. Beloved in the Lord, this we have all heard in the house of God. But he's also told us what he has in mind for us as his children. He has told us if we overcome. 
We shall sit with him in his throne in the thousand year kingdom of peace. He has told us what our Father of love has in mind for us all. Surely, beloved, our eyes have been opened so that we can see today already a part of that glorious Jerusalem, the heavenly city of God, to which we are traveling. And here in the house of God, we learn more and more of our eternal future. Then how does a young girl feel when the man she loves says to her, uh, it is my longing and my desire that we should marry. Beloved, it brings a wonderful feeling within her heart. It brings such a feeling that she could jump over the moon as the expression goes. It's the one whom she loves and the one who loves her has now made a promise. I will marry you. Beloved, do they not want to be alone when they tell one another these things? They, they don't call all the family together and all the neighbors and say, come and hear now the announcement that we are going to make. It is a whisper in the air. And when two people are in love, I've always been in love in my life. When two people are in love and they're sitting alone, they cannot find the private place. They sit on a bench, on a station, or in a park. They don't hear anything that's going on around about them. Because they're looking into one another's eyes. They're looking into one another's heart. And they are whispering sweet nothings into one another's ears. Have you not experienced this, beloved? I have. And it's always been a wonderful feeling. They don't hear the trains going by. They don't hear the noise around about them. Because their hearts are bound together in the bonds of love. And Jesus said, if he love me, keep my commandments. Then it is easy, my dear brothers and sisters. Then here in the house of God, we do not concern ourselves what is going on around about us. In our lives, in our daily lives, we look only for those things that come out of the Father's heart. We remember what we have heard in the services. And this brings a glow again into our soul and into our inner life. What the Lord who loves us has promised unto us. Then did he not say already through the prophet, I have loved thee with an everlasting love. And with loving kindness have I drawn thee. Does that not bring joy in our heart when we hear those words? Does it not have left us? Then after the bride and the bridegroom have gone their different ways. Then in their hearts. There is the continual joy. He loves me. She loves me. The continual joy. We are going to be joined in marriage soon. We are going to be one upon the way of life. 
He has promised me all that is possible in his power to give me. What has God our Father promised us as his children? Can we list them all this morning? The wonderful promises. When he drew us into his house. When he brought us in contact for those who could dispense his love in the congregation. How did we feel when we stood before the altar and received the seal of God's Spirit upon our lives? It already brought a change. And from there we developed we had more and more promises we had more and more of what God our Father has in his heart for us all and beloved in the Lord we came here this morning to hear the word of the Lord we came here this morning to receive more joy and strength in the fulfillment of our holy task as children of God. That this is a mystery for others. But it is no mystery for us. In the voice of our Savior, in all its love and all its beauty, comes to us in every service, inspires, uplifts and strengthens us. Then the circumstances around about us in this world today. Just go into a restaurant, most of them. And all you hear is this bop and pop music. <laughs> and so loud that you can almost not eat your food. I have experienced that. But I have to ignore that so that I can enjoy what I am eating. How many spirits are there that active on the way of life? The spirit of Laodicea that wants to separate that wants to diminish the promises of Jesus Christ that want to bring ideas and opinions in the heart which do not belong to the eternal peace and joy of the soul. This we have all experienced already in our lives. These are going to become louder and worse as the days go by. But beloved, where do we find our refuge here in the house of God? Here where we gather every Sunday. Here where we gather during the week. Then the Lord comes to us and says, My son, my child. As the chief of us still said on New Year's Day, be steadfast in patience. Then we need patience. It is the product of this wonderful spirit which has been laid into our heart and soul. And we need to follow with patience those whom God has appointed for our peace and for our blessing. Then when Jesus was on the Mount of Transfiguration. And Peter, James, and John, as the representatives of faith, of hope, and of love, they saw, they saw Jesus and Moses and Elijah talking with him. Then Jesus was telling them what he had to go through 
And they could bring this then unto the people of their time. But beloved in the Lord. And it says they fell into a trance. And when they woke up they saw only Jesus. Beloved, what do we see when we come into the house of God? Do we only see Jesus Christ in the power and the authority of the ministry of grace and apostleship? This we will always see when our eyes are open. Because before that they were in a trance. But when their eyes were open they only saw Jesus. It is funny, 24 years ago, the chief of Arsenal, Walter Schmidt, held an administration meeting for the district leaders. I was present at that meeting. It was held here in Africa. <coughs> and in this meeting he gave an illustration. Where he said, you take the railway system. There are the drivers, there are the guards. There are all the different places, the different signals along the lines. The different men who handle the points so that the train takes the right line out and does not run into another. But he says each one does not work on his own. There is a central controlling station. And these drivers, these signalmen, perhaps do not even know where it is. They perhaps know nobody that is in that central station. But what comes from there gets transmitted all the way down the line to the drivers of the train, to the signalmen, and they all act according to those instructions. Because just imagine if each train driver thought, ah, oh, well, I'll pull off now, or oh, I'll stop here for 10 minutes. What, a, what absolute chaos and destruction would result. Then he brought it into the spiritual sense. The central station is God the Father who is in charge. The Savior Jesus Christ. And the apostles of Jesus. All instructions come down from them through the administration rather than to the congregation. Can you imagine if each priest then goes his own way? What chaos and destruction can come in the congregation. But we all take our orders from the top. That which comes out of the Father's heart. That which comes out of the power of the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. Dear brothers and sisters, and do we live according to this? And through this we also learn the will and the purpose of our Heavenly Father to bring us all safely to our destination on the morn of the first resurrection as overcomers as those whom his spirit has moved and shaped and molded to his eternal will. John, I think you can forget it now. <coughs> My dear brothers and sisters, 
When we consider all these things, what does it bring within your soul? Does it not bring a joy out of God's spirit? Then when the joy is gone, then there is no more longing. There is no more incentive. Often there is no more hope within the heart when the joy is gone. And this joy we want to maintain within our heart, within our soul, and within as the Lord in His love visited us. Do we feel His glory? Do we feel the power of the eternal creative spirit of our heavenly Father? Surely, beloved, we do. Then I have seen that in the increase in your offerings in the house of God. You are bringing more and more to the throne of grace and of mercy. And we are offering more and more of ourselves that we go into the background and God's Spirit comes into the foreground. Dear brothers and sisters, I don't want to keep you as I kept the congregation last week so long in the house of God. I don't want our visitors to go back and say they hold two and a half and three hour services in Zambia. But I will tell them last week's service was two and a half hours. It's not that I spoke so many things. But I called up five or six men last Sunday. Opportunities which we must take while we've got them. And I always think of an apostle. When he said, the one farmer's cow strayed into the other farmer's field. The farmer knew it was not his cow. But he thought he had eaten some of his grass. So he first milked the cow and then sent it back. So we do the same. And that's what we did last week. We first milked the cow and then we sent them back again. My dear brothers and sisters, that's what the Lord wants us to do to take his word and his glory into our soul and into our inner life so that we walk uprightly before God and we will be able to say to the spirits no I it's not always easy because they come with such pressure upon our lives it's what Jesus meant when he said there's only two things, yea and nay, of everything else comes evil. <coughs> we say yes to the word of the Lord as it flows from the Father heart. And we say no to every other spirit. Then you can be sure we will develop in the fullness of the nature and the character of Jesus Christ. Then this is a mystery, a mystery to others. But our union with Christ on the morn of the first resurrection as our bridegroom is a mystery that will be fulfilled. And then we will see what God in his love has done for us all. I have loved thee with an everlasting love. Fear not, Jacob, because I have chosen thee. Let us take that which God through his word lays within our hearts. But you know, I've also got a very good gift. 
And if somebody is talking too much in my ear, that I can shut off and don't hear what they are saying. Don't ask my wife, she'll tell you that's true. Beloved in the Lord, <laughs> let us shut off these powers that are continually whispering. Don't you think Jesus on the cross, Satan was always there? In his pain and in his agony. To try and distract him from his purpose to do the will of his father. But he could shut out the influences. Because his inner life was built according to the will of God. He carried the love to his father. As a bride, she remains faithful to her bridegroom because she wants to be united with him. So we as God's servants and children, God grant us the grace so that also this word, this mystery to others, I speak concerning Christ and the church. Beloved in the Lord, I think now it is time I called up one or the other. As you see, we have many visitors. Therefore, I will say Amen now. Amen. We have here, as I said, two visitors. They may be strangers in the flesh, but they carry the same promises, the same hopes, the same longing, the same prayer as we do. Lord, come and take us home. They both speak better English than I speak German. So then they know how good their English is. But beloved, if they put the cart before the horse, then in your soul, put the horse in the right place and the cart in the right place. Dear brothers and sisters, and the district evangelist, Rochley, can also come and bring a few words out of his heart. The choir, please prepare the way for him. A district evangelist Roshli, as I am called a choir, fetch me from Tima Wao. We are to hoi imbanga imbe. Are you all right? No. Yes, sir. You all right? My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, Libala is a very nice congregation. Livala, Livala. Livala. Yes. Livala. But not that place here. <laughs> I would like to sit there. Your district apostle has served us this morning. And now I would like to ask you, what did you feel 
in your hearts kodi mazimba banj mitima yanu did you really feel the wonderful love of god kodi mwamba chikondi chodabwi sacha mulungu did we understand what the holy ghost want to tell us kodi mwamba sesa chomwe mzimwo yera wafuna kuti utiuze your district apostle said mtumwano wachigao anena kuti that i should now express what i have in my heart akuti ndipotokozi chomwe ndili nacho mumtima wanga but it's not possible to tell you what is in my heart even if i would tell it in german koma sichoteka kuti ndikupotokozereni chomwe chili mumtima wanga ngakhale kuti ningaroledu kuti ndichiyankhule mu german so it's not possible to tell it in english tero sichili choteka kuchipotokoza mchizungu we can only feel in our heart what what god has given us tingangozimba mitima yathu chomwe mulungu watipasa and that's the great mystery we experience in each service each india to since cha chikuru chomwe tisimikiza mapempero ali once each service in the house of god is a mystery mapempero ali once mnyumba ya mulungu ndi chisinsi because it's the word of god chifukwa ndiliu la mulungu it comes from heaven chichokera kumamba and god has promised that the holy ghost will give us what he sees and hears at the throne of god ndipo mulungu alonjeza kunena kuti mzimwo yera uzati potokozera chomwe uona kumpando wa mulungu when a boy has a secret in his heart pomwe mnyamata ali nacho chisinsi mumtima wache he don't may tell it to his father sa potokozera atate wache nor to his mother kapena kwa mai wache nor to everybody on the street kaya kwa aliense yemwa kumana nao pamseo but he will certainly tell it to his friend koma azachi vumburusa kwa bwenzi lache and that is what, what god is doing this morning ichi ndichimodzi modzi mulungu akuchichita mamuno already jesus he wasn't serving on the streets and big places in jerusalem kristo mthawi yacho sana kale ndi kufotokoza mapalala kapena makachisi he was serving to his disciples and apostles and to the members of them koma anapumbulusa kwa kupunzira ache ndiponso ndikwa iwe wonse anali woyanja nisidwa kwa iye and therefore each congregation and each member each child of god is a mystery for others tero a mwana wa mulungu ali yense ali yense wopezedwa mumpingo ali ndi chisinsi kwa iye you should be it every day inu mwana kumana siku lili ronse When I was a young man, I was young once too. Pomwe ndinali nyamata, ndinali nso mwana wachepa. I was in the military service. Ndinali mapempero. And there I had a commander and I was working late in the evening with him. Ndipo ndinali naye wosogolera, yeme ndinali kutumikira naye, next thing the naye. Then he asked me at about 11 o'clock in the evening. Sikulina nandi punsa 11 o'clock ya usiku what are you kodi ndi wendani i didn't understand him sinam besese konsolache so he said are you catholic anati kodi uli wa chipembezo cha katolika or are you belonging to the reformed church kapena uli wa chipembezo cha reformed i told him i told him i am new apostolic Dinampotokozera kuti ndine wa mpingo wa atumwe then he said i thought it anati dinaganiza tero and that was a nice experience for me ichi chinali chisimikizo chokondweresa kwa ina because i thought he could feel the appearance the child of god the children of god have Chipukwa ndinadzimva kuti akhandi kuzipenyera yekha kusiyana kwa ana amulungu and that appearance others can feel and see ndipo maonekedwe ala ena ama ama kupenya ndikuzimva because the bride of god has a special appearance 
Chifu kwa mkatibu wa Mulungu alina kukuonekera kuhusiana ndiye ana. And the big mystery today <laughs> is the preparation of the bride of God. Ndipo chisinzi cha chikuru ndi kukonza kwa mkatibu wa. I tell you once ndi kuuze ni china chacha. When the Lord is coming pomwe ambuye azabwera. He doesn't come to Zurich. Taza bwera ku Zurich. He doesn't come to Lusaka. Taza bwera ku Lusaka. Or to London. Kapena ku London. He comes to the bride of God, to the children of God. Azabwera kwa akwatibwe amulungu, kwa ana amulungu. And therefore we will be completed for that day. Amen. Ndipo tizakhala osirizika pa siku ilo. My dear brothers and sisters, Okondedwa abale ndi alongo. Nice when you so close to the altar. Chili chabwino pomwe muli pafupi ndi gua. Now wonderful when we are all so close to the Father's heart. Chili chodabwisa mota ni pomwe tikhala pafupi ndi mtima wa tatu. When you near the altar then you must sit quiet. Pomwe mwakhala pafupi ndi gua mwena kukhala chete. So that you do not disturb the others in the congregation. Kuti msasokoneze ena mumpingo. I mean I can't see you getting wet outside. Sinika kondwele kuti inu mzingo loke wa pabwa. There is room in the house of God. Pomwe muli malo mnyumba ya Mulungu. But I the choir will sing another. Ngati oyimba ka imbenso pesi ina. Then priest Maiba can also come and add a few words. Na enso priest Maiba abwera za onje zirepo mao mo. They're just as nervous as I am beloved. Na onso ali na umanta munga ine. beloved brothers and sisters in Christ Okondedwa abale ndi alongo mwa Kristu we are very very thankful to share 
this hour here with you. The Lord has richly blessed us. And under the service of our district apostle brought the glory of his presence into our midst. It is a mystery, brothers and sisters, that we are permitted to be here. And now, when we look at it for a while, and the district apostle told us of the desires of love of a man and a woman. That they have only a desire to be together. And they don't hear the railway passing by. They don't see the people walking past. They just look into each other's eyes. I was reminded of a small little story which I heard once. And somebody said, you know, when a man and a woman sit together for an hour, it seems like a second when they are in love. But when a man puts his hand on a hot stove for a second, it seems like an hour. And now this gathering this morning, even if the district apostle would make a little bit longer, we wouldn't report that to Zurich. <laughs> it is just so wonderful to listen and to look into his eyes. To feel how he tries to embrace us with the love of the chief apostle. And it says in one place in the scripture, Behold, I show you a mystery. And that mystery is yet to come, we heard about it. And that mystery is we shall not all asleep. But we shall all be changed at the last trumpet. And that in a twinkling of an eye. That is what we wait for and what we are prepared for. And we all want to experience it from any place in this world. I used to work in Bangladesh for the last 10 years. The congregations there are not so big as here. But we all there and here have the same goal. And you know when we look, how did Isaac recognizes bride. The master servant went to pick it up for him. Um, the master servant, Eliezer, he went to pick it up for him, uh, the bride. He had never seen her before. He didn't know how she would look like. But he knew one thing, that he would love her. Because he knew that his father had only the best in mind for him. And it says in the scripture that when Eliezer 
came back with his crew and on one of these camels was Rebecca sitting and he could recognize her because she decorated herself why did she decorate herself because Eliezer said now listen now we are coming into my master's homeland and then she couldn't wait she took out of her luggage all the decorations and ornaments and put it on and that is what our district apostle did with us this morning here he said to us now we have again come to the homeland of our heavenly father and he decorated us with the most beautiful ornaments ornaments out of the heavenly treasure case of our father and it is easy for us now to go out and home and say I have seen the Lord nothing could deviate my listening and then we shine in our neighborhood as a mystery Amen. Amen. Will the choir sing one more verse, please? That all in Ben's of verse, Moses. I think now we are ready <coughs> to partake of the great sacrifice of our Savior Jesus Christ. We have been prepared for this moment in a wonderful manner. And the district evangelist and priest have also laid many, many wonderful thoughts upon our hearts. Now we want to establish everything within our soul by partaking of the body and blood of our Savior Jesus Christ. It's the highlight of the service. So I ask you now to stand and unite with me in the Lord's prayer. Forgive our debtors 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. I announce unto you the glad tidings. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the Living God. Muzina la Yesu Christu, mwana wa mulungu wa moyo. That your sins are forgiven. Machimo anu akurulukidwa. And his peace be with you. Dimtendele wache ukarendinu. Amen. Amen. Father, we thank thee for these precious moments. Atate tikuongani chifukwa chanyengo izi zokongola. Moments of joy and of peace out of thy father heart. Where we have grown in our understanding and thou has taken us higher on Mount Zion and thou hast established within our soul a firm connection with thee and with thy son. Thy word will be our guide through the days which lie before us. Bless our dear chief of us too. And his dear wife, grant them the bodily powers they need. Bless all the apostles and thy servants. Awaken thy word every day within our hearts. And let us walk before thy children in the power of faith and the power of love. Bless all who work and labor in thy house. Father, remember the sick and the suffering. And those who are coming to the evening of their days. Help and remember them in thy love. Remember also those who stand alone as the older people, the widows and orphans. Bless our children and the youth of thy house. Let them grow in God's fear and in the powers of the world to come. O Father, thou knowest our longing. Shorten this time. Send thy son soon to take us home. And in this longing I now dedicate bread and wine for the service of the Holy Supper. And lay into it the once brought and eternally valid sacrifice of Jesus Christ with the words, this is my body broken into death for you. This is my blood shed for you for the forgiveness of your sins. Come and eat, come and drink. And when you do this, do it to my remembrance. Amen. Amen. Amen.
My dear brothers and sisters, we are thankful that we have received this wonderful glory in our dear district apostle. The glory which we must preserve so that on that glorious day we can see our Father face to face. When we think our loved ones, the pioneers of this work who have already left this world, there is no mystery to them they see wonderful glory which awaits us who are following on this path and in these occasions when we come in the house of the Lord Mm. The longing which we have is the same longing which they have also. As to shorten the time. So that the fulfillment of this glory can come to its reality. And it is in this respect that we also want to remember them. Then they can all come and also be join in us and receive what we have received. And as our district apostles here, we will also save them. Therefore, as a preparation, we as a congregation, we should stand and sing two verses, hymn number 633. <clears throat> oh, the home of my soul. <laughs> Come all who God in his grace has invited to the mercy seat this morning. Ezani inunonse omwe mulungu machikondi chache wakala ndi kuitana kumpando iwachisomo mamu. Can partake of the holy sacrament. Ezani mzalandire mala sacramenta oyera. Come and rejoice with us. Ezani mzasangarare nafe. Come and receive out of these two vessels sanctified for the purpose. Body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ given for you for your eternal peace and to the honor of God. Amen. Amen. Thanks. We thank thee, Father of love, for all that which thou hast done upon our souls. Go with us now on our various journeys home. Preserve thy word within our hearts. Grant, O oh Father, that that which we have received 
We may protect as a great treasure within our souls. Father, bless thy people in this coming week. And what they ask of thee, Father, in thy love, grant. And also for our friends from Zurich. Further away, further to Arari, and then home again. Oh, Father, let thy grace go with them. So preserve us all in thy hand and in thy love. For the glorious morn of the first resurrection. Give us thy angel service on all our ways. For Jesus' sake. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, and the comforting fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, can I tell the evangelist Roshli and priest Maybach when they return to Zurich, that we all send our love to our dear chief master? Do you agree? He's probably heard it already. <laughs> God bless and keep you all. Mulungu, akudarisen, dikusunga, dikusunga and I thank you both on behalf of the congregation for what you've laid upon our hearts today. Remember us always in your kind friend. So my dear brothers and sisters, Go in peace upon your pathway. And God keep you in his hand and in his love. I don't know when I will visit Libala again. I know sometimes you sneak in at Central and then we meet one another. I would do the same if I was in your position. God bless you and keep us all for the glorious day of his son.